Today, I want to tell you guys a story time about that one time that I got robbed at knife point. Now, this story time goes back to, like pretty much all my story times do, it goes back to roughly about a year ago, something along that lines. And around this time, I was a little kid that liked a, that booger sugar a little bit too much, guys. A little bit too much, okay? And I used to go to different people's houses every weekend. I would bounce from house to house to house to house, all within the space of two days. And sometimes this would put me in dangerous situations, okay? And this particular time was the most dangerous experience I have personally ever been through in my whole entire life. And I didn't want to tell, I obviously I had the YouTube channel at the time and I didn't want to like make a video about it just in case the guy like found out where I lived or like, you know, came and told me to take it down or, or just in case he saw it, you know what I mean? But now that is not as much of a worry for me as it was back then. Let me tell you, this guy is a psychopath and I cannot wait to tell you guys about him. So, th like I said, this story goes back to about a year ago and I was just finishing work. Um, I had nothing on me. I was, you know, and I was running out of sleep throughout the whole week, but that's fine, right? That happened to me all the time. And like I did every single Friday night, I got a taxi from my house to Peterhead, which is a town known for its MCAT population. But uh, we won't get too much into that. I think, well, I'll make a separate video about that. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, this time... Um, I got a taxi to my friend's house and this was a different friend. I didn't usually sesh with him, right? But because of the situations, he would always bring me in these terrible like situations where I would need to like be paranoid and stuff all the time and I wouldn't be able to get out of them because it would be like two in the morning bef all, before I know it and then I'm just in the gaff with random people that I didn't even know. And this is what happened this night. We go around to this girl's house and she is a tink, bro. She is disgusting, man. She, like, and she's my age, right? And she used to have just hundreds of people around her house. Not hundreds, but, like, maybe 10 people at a time. And the house was always so populated. But luckily for me, this one time, me and my friends go to this girl's house and our dealer lives next door. But the, the girl didn't have anyone in the house at the time. It was just her at this time. And her house was disgusting. Her TV was broken. It stunk. She had cats ro running about everywhere. Trash oh, absolutely everywhere. Didn't clean it before we got there, so we didn't really respect the gaff. But a lot of people did because it was a place to get on it, a place to congregate and just talk about our feelings throughout the week. Well, that's what you think, but trust me, it's it's nothing like that. Anyway, she has a living room and she has a kitchen. And the kitchen's got a door and it that leads from the living room to the kitchen. So it's it's just right there, right? And in the kitchen, I'm standing there and me and my friend are there for... for god knows how long we were there for a long time and she says oh these people are away to come up are they okay and most of the time we'd be like nah you're not bringing anyone around but this time we made a quite a slight exception because we were on it okay and we're like yeah fuck it who are they and then she tells us the names we didn't recognize any of the names dude we had no idea who these people were but this guy that robbed us was actually on his way and to this day I, I still have no idea whether this girl that had the house was doing this to get us robbed, you know what I'm saying? I I don't know if she was doing that or not, but it wouldn't surprise me, okay? Anyway, they all get there and they're all loud and, you know, they're drunk, really drunk and um, they didn't have any cat, they had no money, they were poor as shit, they were brokies, they had no money whatsoever yet. And um, they're just in the, the living room, they're chatting. We didn't open the door, but we had to open the door eventually. And uh, there was three boys sitting there. Three boys, yeah. Um, and they were just, you could tell that they were so drunk. They had arms around girls that they didn't even have a clue where. They had terrible skin fade haircuts. They wore disgusting clothes. Just them kind of people, yeah. Just not the best kind of people. Um, and this particular time I was in the kitchen and uh my friend went to the toilet and then they all came in and they were like can I get a line 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 and I was like yeah fuck it whatever and I gave them all a line yeah and f for all I knew I thought that they were already on it but they weren't and that's what made them rattle to the point they were literally willing to knife knife point me basically um, but this didn't happen until basically my friend got back from the toilet and we were sniffing in the kitchen and 
one of the boys comes in, yeah, and he's he's pissed off. He's like, oh, how dare you use this girl for her house? Um, you know, you're just in her kitchen with the door shut. She's out there, you know, feeling miserable, needing a line, all this kind of stuff. And we're like, well, I mean, she's never asked. I mean, she can easily come in if she wants. Like, we don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? And he just, he wasn't, he wasn't caring. He was drunk and he was just spitting in my face, like spitting. Like every time he spoke, there was like bits of spit flying out. And I'd be like, mate, stop fucking spitting. Like, what are you doing? Um, and he was like, man, give me a gram of that right now. And I was like, well, have you got money? And he's like, no, give me that and fucking give me a gram of it right now. At least a gram. And I was like, no, I'm not going to give you. Like, I wasn't expecting to get like jumped over the shit. But the guy literally, right. He shows me the knife in his waistband. He lifts up his t-shirt and he's like, give me that fucking gram right now. And I was like, no, I'm not giving you a gram. I was just, I was not giving it up because I was obsessed with this stuff, dude. And this guy, I, he looked like an absolute fucking just weirdo, man. He didn't look like the kind of guy that would rob somebody. But he pulls a knife out and then he's like, he makes me lift up my shirt to see if I've got anything in there. He's like, lift up your fucking shirt. And I lift it up, nothing in there. He'd done the same to my friend. And my cat was in my pocket and he held the knife up to me and he says, give me everything you've got right now. And he said it really like low in his voice so no one would hear him. He was like, give me everything you've got. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I wasn't sure. And I could see in his eyes, like his eyes were like pure bulging out of his skull. And he was just like, give me everything. Like he was a psychopath, like almost. And as soon as I seen that look in his eyes, I knew he was serious. And I was like, fuck this, man, whatever. And I pull out three grams from my pocket. And I'm just like, here, you fucking arsehole, man. I didn't say that to him. And I was like, um, like, I did say, oh, can you give me the rest back? You can have a gram. We can just all go our own way. And he was like, no, I'm taking all of it. And I was like, you are an absolute dick. So me and my friends leave. And we're like, fuck that gaff. We are never, ever going back to that house ever again. Because that house was a disgusting place. I'm sure the girl that lives there still does that shit nowadays, but, uh, yeah, it was just a disgusting time, dude. It was a horrible time, bro. It was disgusting, man. Um, and we went and got more car, and then we went to another girl's house that was actually sound. She was nice. She didn't invite anyone over. We ended up having a decent enough weekend, but that story always has stood out to me, and I, I, not until now could I have told it, okay? I couldn't have told any of that story uh, up until now because it was just, it was horrible to happen. And I got, I genuinely had like some sort of like PTSD thing from it. Um, and I stopped going to like houses that I didn't know and it kind of kept me out of trouble for a bit, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, he's he kind of humbled me for a little while. Um, you know, it was roughly around the time where I stopped just going to gaffs altogether and just doing it in my room and, like, going out and doing mad shit, like, by myself or, like, with a friend that I actually trust. Um, you know, so that story time definitely stuck out to me. And it was, like, it was a horrible time, dude. It was a disgusting time. I can't believe the fucking mink done that, but he done it. And we, there's no bringing back the past, but haven't really seen that guy since. I did get word that he actually uh, kicked one of my friends in the face uh, one time, um, but yeah, apart from that, none of that shit ever happened to me again, because I was just so worried about that happening again, and, you know, I could just never imagine, like, robbing somebody, you know what I'm saying, like, you could literally offer them, no, you could literally ask them for a line, and they'll give you it, and if they start being cunts about it, demand one, one line, just demand it, don't demand their whole batch, yeah, just because you are a tink and can't afford it yourself, your UC doesn't come in until next week, so you've got to go rob off kids to get a feel, to feel good, right, um, yeah, as you can tell, this guy still kind of pisses me off nowadays, and he really does, because that's just a horrible thing to do to someone, and, um, yeah, I just hope you guys like this story, uh, where we've got kind of a new background, the setup's like here, um, we've got the nice tripod there. I should be getting my phone back soon. Uh, iPhone 14 uh, that I got taken off me two years ago by the police. I should be getting that back soon. So I'm very excited for that. More videos coming what, for 100%. Um, I've got so many more story times like this that I can literally tell, dude. And story, like right now I'm at the point where I just don't give a fuck like what anyone says. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to make story times for you guys. And hopefully we can grow the channel a little bit more. But Thank you to uh, a special commenter called Clippers. He's been commenting on every single one of my YouTube videos, just supporting me, saying that he loves my content. And that is like literally all I need for just people like that 
just to say that they enjoyed it and had a laugh out of it or like maybe thought wow I'm never gonna do what this guy does or just anything any supportive comments really does touch my heart it goes a hell of a long way and uh, we're only at the beginning really so I hope you guys did enjoy and I will see you in the next one in a bit